Welcome to this video. In this video, we will study how to determine MMF and reluctance of air gap in a rotating electrical machine. So, the study of magnetic circuits is important in the design of electrical machines. So, before going into the details, uh, let us briefly review these three terms that we usually come across while studying magnetic circuits. The first one is MMF. So, MMF is the force behind the production of magnetic flux. So the unit of MMF is ampere turns. Suppose you have a coil with n number of turns and let a current I is flowing through the coil. Then n into I or ampere turns gives the value of MMF. Similarly, there is another way of calculating MMF. Suppose you know the magnetic field intensity H in a circuit and length of the magnetic circuit L. Then H into L is also equal to ampere turns or MMF. Then the second parameter is flux. So the flux is a quantity showing the amount of magnetic field lines established by MMF. The unit of flux is Weber. Then the third quantity is reluctance. This is analogous to resistance in electrical circuits. So reluctance is the opposition given to establishment of flux by the magnetic circuit. So these three are related by this expression flux is equal to MMF by reluctance. So what will be the unit of reluctance? It is ampere turns per Weber because MMF by flux gives reluctance. MMF by flux, ampere turns per Weber. So this is analogous to Ohm's law in electrical circuits. There you have current is equal to voltage by resistance. Okay. So in all rotating electrical machines, we can find an air gap between stator and rotor. The magnetic field established in this air gap facilitates the energy conversion process. So we should be able to calculate the MMF in the air gap of a machine and reluctance of the air gap to design a particular electrical machine, a rotating machine. So first we will consider a simple case. So before going into that, we can discuss what are the challenges in calculating the MMF. So mainly there are three challenges or problems. So the first challenge is, uh, you, uh, all of you know that air gap is between stator and rotor. So either stator will be slotted or rotor will be slotted or both will be slotted. It may not be a smooth iron surface. So one or both of the iron surfaces around the air gap may be slotted. So what is the consequence? flux tends to concentrate on the teeth. So I will explain this point with the help of a diagram later. So for the time being, uh, flux tends to concentrate on the teeth. So it results in non-uniform distribution of flux in the air gap. So basically slotted armature results in non-uniform distribution of flux in the air gap. Then the second challenge is there would be radial ventilating ducts provided in machines for cooling. So, because of the presence of radial ventilating ducts, there will be a contraction of flux in the axial direction. This also we will see in details. So, this is another challenge in calculating MMF for air gap. Then the third one is salient pole machines. In the case of salient pole machines, you know that the air gap will be non-uniform. You have different gap lengths in the polar region and in the interpolar region and throughout the periphery of the rotor if you look at the diagram you can see the air gap is non-uniform so it is a challenge to calculate the MMF in the air gap when you have non-uniform air gap so these are the three challenges so we will first consider a simple case so case one here we have smooth iron surfaces on both sides of the air gap so this will be present in machines with the closed slots. Okay, so I have drawn a diagram here. So here you can see the rotor is having closed slots. So the rotor surface is smooth. So you can see that the rotor surface is smooth. Similarly, the stator surface is also shown to be smooth. So as far as the air gap is concerned, it sees smooth iron surface on both sides. So an enlarged view of this 
of portion a zoomed view of this portion is shown here okay so here you can see this is stator this is rotor and in between you have air gap and you can see that there is a smooth iron surface on both sides so the flux lines are uniform there is a perfect uniform distribution of flux so we can define these parameters here ys indicates the distance between midpoint of one slot to the midpoint of the adjacent slot and it is denoted as uh, it is called slot pitch okay so it is denoted by ys and lg represents the length of the air gap so what will be the reluctance of the air gap reluctance of the air gap is l by mu a the equation is l by mu a so here length of the magnetic circuit is lg then mu permeability of the medium it is air so it is mu zero then area of air gap so what will be the area of the air gap area of the air gap is one dimension is visible in the figure you can see this ys dimension here and if you observe uh, imagine the three dimensional view of this machine there is a dimension in this direction that is core length l so area of the air gap will be this ys multiplied by the core length okay so you will get the area of the air gap so l into ys gives a so effectively reluctance of the air gap is lg by mu zero into l into ys so that uh, that is a very simple case but in practical situation you have either uh, slotted armature or slotted stator uh, sorry slotted rotor or slotted stator here i have shown a slotted structure on the rotor so if you have a slotted um, situation then how will you calculate the air, air gap reluctance so one observation is you can see here this stator is shown to be a uniform iron surface stator is uniform iron surface but in a rotor you have slots and the tooth okay so rotor structure is non-uniform so flux tries to concentrate on the iron part so it will move from iron to iron so or it will concentrate on tooth region since this is the iron part it will concentrate on the tooth width so that is our first observation then when the flux concentrate on the tooth width effective area of flux distribution is decreased previously we had uniform flux distribution throughout the slot pitch ys now it is reduced to the tooth width so the effective area is decreased so reluctance is inversely proportional to area so the air gap reluctance of the air gap is increased because area is decreased so reluctance will increase and we have two terms written here ws is called slot width okay remember these terms then wt is called tooth width and you can see a relation here ws and wt when you add a slot width with the tooth width you will get one slot pitch so that is a, a relation useful for doing problems ys is equal to ws plus wt okay so now we have to calculate the reluctance of the air gap so reluctance of the air gap is given by l by mu a there is no change on the length of the air gap it is lg as before but area is different so now the length over which the flux is distributed is uh, changed to ys dash okay suppose this is ys dash and what is ys dash ys dash is identical to wt width of the tooth so width of tooth is nothing but from the previous ex explanation we have written ws plus wt is ys so wt is nothing but ys minus ws so you can write that ys dash is ys minus ws so the reluctance of the air gap is lg by mu zero lg divided by mu zero into area of air gap area is core length into the new value of effect or an effective value of slot pitch 
that is ys dash because flux is now concentrated only on ys dash so l into ys dash ys dash is ys minus w s so i have substituted it here so this is the expression for reluctance of air gap when there is a slotted armature okay now in the practical situation when you have slotting flux will not be distributed like this in practical case there will be some fringing at the edges of the tooth like this flux lines will be showing some fringing effect so if you consider the effect of fringing what will be the effective reluctance of the air gap that we are going to calculate so to simplify the analysis we will use an assumption here so what is the assumption air gap flux is uniformly distributed over the whole of slot pitch except for a fraction of the slot width so i will explain what is this we will assume this this condition that is now flux is assumed to be concentrated uniformly over ys some fraction of slot pitch by s that is ys dash so in here we have some fringing of fluxes so we will assume that flux is concentrated over a fraction of ys fraction of ys is denoted as ys dash so it is shown in this diagram ys dash and it is not equal to tooth width that is the main point to be noted in the previous figure it was ys dash exactly equal to wt tooth width but here it is not equal you can see here tooth width is this one but in order to accommodate for the fringing effect we are assuming flux is distributed over a length ys dash slightly greater than wt okay and this ys dash is wt plus a fraction of this slot width ws a fraction of the slot width is included here so ys dash is wt plus delta into ws delta is a fraction a number less than one so wt into delta ws is ys dash that is effective or contracted slot pitch then wt plus delta ws we can add and subtract ws so i have rearranged this wt plus ws i have combined into one term then the remaining term is one mi minus of one minus delta into ws okay so what is wt plus ws tooth width plus slot width is slot pitch ys and this term is one minus delta into ws minus of one minus delta into ws so ys dash is ys minus one minus delta into ws and this term 1 minus delta is denoted by kcs where kcs is called carter's gap coefficient okay so kcs is called carter's gap coefficient and how to find kcs because kcs is required for calculating ys dash after calculating ys dash you can calculate reluctance of air gap so how to find kcs there is an empirical formula to calculate kcs and this empirical formula is given as kcs is equal to 1 divided by 5 1 divided by 1 plus 5 into lg by ws okay so you can see that this is gap length and this is slot width so kcs is a function of slot width by gap length another empirical relation is available for parallel sided open slots it is shown here kcs is equal to 2 by pi into tan inverse y minus 1 by pi into log of root 1 plus y square where y is slot width divided by 2 times length of air gap so these empirical relations uh, are useful for doing numerical problems sometimes they will be directly given in the question uh, if not given you should remember this expression kcs is equal to 1 by 1 plus 5 into lg by ws okay then so the now we will calculate the reluctance so the reluctance of air gap with the slotted armature is length of air gap divided by mu zero into instead of slot pitch ys we have ys dash to accommodate for the effect of slotting into l 
So what is ys dash? ys dash is ys minus kcs into ws. This we have seen before. ys dash is ys minus kcs into ws. So that I have substituted here. So that is the reluctance of the air gap. So this is the expression for reluctance with a slotted armature. Now we will define another term known as gap contraction factor for slots. So it is defined as the ratio of reluctance of air gap of slotted armature to reluctance of air gap of smooth armature. Reluctance for slotted divided by reluctance for smooth armature. Okay. So we will calculate it. So for uh, slotted armature, we know that reluctance is Lg divided by mu0 L into Ys dash. And for smooth armature, air gap reluctance is Lg by mu0 into L into Ys. So the point to remember is length of air gap, permeability, core length. These three factors are same for both the slotted armature and the smooth armature. Only thing is the slot pitch is changed to Ys dash in the case of slotted armature. Effective length over which the flux is distributed is only Ys dash, not Ys. So the ratio is, if you, if, when you cancel these terms, you will get Ys divided by Ys dash. What is Ys dash? Ys dash is Ys minus Kcs into Ws. So this is the expression for gap contraction factor for slots. It is denoted as Kgs. Now we will consider the second challenge effect of radial ventilating ducts so when you consider the case of radial ventilating ducts what happens to reluctance of air gap so you can see here effective axial length is reduced due to the presence of radial ventilating ducts this is a shaft and this is the rotor and this is stator this is stator and this is rotor and in between you have air gap and the flux lines are shown here so this is a side view so if there is no duct i will show the figure with without duct so this is shaft and the rotor will be a continuous iron body if there is no duct and we have air gap and there will be stator here okay but when you the moment you introduce ducts there will be radial ventilating ducts the, the effective length of iron will be reduced these are some radial ventilating ducts to facilitate cooling so when you introduce ducts like this this is a radial duct okay so the effective iron length is reduced so it is given by length original core length l minus kcd into nd into wd so we will see what are these terms so L dash is L minus KCD ND WD where KCD is the Cartier's coefficient for ducts. We have seen Cartier's coefficient for gap. Similarly, this is Cartier's coefficient for ducts. And ND is the number of ducts and WD is the width of a duct. Okay, so gap contraction factor for ducts. This is, we have defined gap contraction factor for slots. Similarly, you can define it for ducts. So this is the ratio of reluctance of air gap with the ducts divided by reluctance of air gap without ducts. So previously there was change only in this Ys term. Core length was the same in both cases with the smooth armature and without smooth armature. Sorry, with smooth armature and with the slotted armature. But here core length is also different in both cases. When you have ducts uh, without ducts, core length is L. Here you can see L. When you have ducts in the core, uh, the length is uh, reduced. Length of air gap is reduced. It is L dash. So if you do the simplification, you can see that this ratio is L by L dash. And L dash is, we have seen the expression for L dash, it is L minus KCD ND into WD. So KGD is equal to L by L minus KCD ND WD. So this is gap contraction factor for ducts. Now we can define a total gap contraction factor Kg. So this is reluctance of ratio of reluctance of slotted armature with ducts to reluctance of smooth armature without ducts. 
okay so for slotted armature with ducts what is the reluctance length of air gap divided by mu zero into ys dash since it is slotted if it was smooth armature it is simply ys since it is slotted armature it is ys dash and since there are ducts present with the ducts it is l dash so that is written here now for smooth armature this time this time will be ys and since it is without ducts it is l so if you cancel the uh, lg and mu zero times you will get ys into l divided by ys dash l dash okay so what is ys divided by ys dash let us go back to this expression ys divided by ys dash is nothing but kgs so kgs is ys divided by ys dash so we can use this and similarly l divided by l dash is nothing but kgd okay so ys divided by ys dash is kgs and l divided by l dash is kgd so so the total gap contraction factor is the product of gap contraction factor for slots and gap contraction factor for ducts this is for ducts okay kgs into kgd gives kg now in some machines both stator and rotor will be slotted so in that case the gap contraction factor for slots have two components gap contraction factor for stator slots that is kgss and for rotor slots that is kgsr so the product of kgss and kgsr will give you the gap contraction factor for slots if both stator and rotor are slotted